How come some people just appear really charismatic, likable, confident, just really good on video or live stream? Let's talk about it. Robert Kennedy the third RK3 that's me before we jump into the video do your man a solid give me the YouTube hookup and like subscribe and share the channel hey listen there's something else that I've been finding out you know how back in the day you used to just be able to subscribe to the channel there is now this thing called the notification bell so I want you to boom hit that bell and get notified every time we create a new video. And we want you to do that so that you can learn more with us about the techniques. Got to get my hand around the mic and the technologies of storytelling. Boom. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's roll. In addition to people asking me questions, I quite often ask questions to clients, to some of the people in my Storytellers Growth Lab, to coaches, consultants, anybody who wants to become better at speaking and sharing their story. And one of the questions I often ask is, why aren't you doing more on video? Why aren't you live streaming? And some of the reasons that I get are, I can't live stream. What if they don't like me? I don't know what to say. My forehead's too big. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you five things you can do to up your confidence game every time you do a video or a live stream. Here's the first tip. Before you get started with your video or your live stream, you really want to have an idea of where you're going to be taking the audience. As a matter of fact, if I were to ask them about that video or that live stream a week, two weeks later, what's the big takeaway? What's the one thing that you really want them to remember? So tip number one is be clear on that one big takeaway that you want your audience to have even before you get started with your video or your recording. Tip number two is you really want to have a framework that you can use to take you from the beginning through the middle to the end of your video because a lot of times people get on live streams and they just ramble they're not sure about where they're where they're going they're not even sure about the journey that they're going to take the audience on and it's clear that they're not sure about the sure about the journey themselves so you really want to have an idea of where you're going to take the audience and where you're going to end up because it makes that journey much more confident for you. As a matter of fact, if you want to get some ideas about simple frameworks that you can use, I'll share a tip in the links in the description below. Tip number three is warm up and energy up. I remember when I used to do public speaking before quarantine and I would drive to an event, I would always have music. I would have something that energized me on the way to event so that I could literally, it's like the Rocky music. It's like Eminem, lose yourself. It's something that really drives me, something that allows me to get my energy up so that I can then transmit that energy to the audience. What is your warm up? When I used to sing and we had rehearsals, we used to do all sorts of crazy contortions with our faces. We used to do these contortions to warm us up and to stretch our faces and just kind of get us loose. And it's the same thing with athletes, with anyone else that is preparing for something big. They warm up, they get themselves in state, they get themselves in the place where they're able to deliver something of value with energy to their audience. So make sure that you warm up and energy up. Tip number four, be sure to have a strong opening. You only have a few seconds to get your audience's interest. So what is the thing that you're going to do to to get that interest and keep it pretty quickly? As a matter of fact, if you check out the suggested video right right about here, somewhere here, I share a video that I've done recently about how you can crush the openings of your speeches, of your presentations, of your videos, a simple technique that I use. And if you use that, I guarantee you that it's going to have a different impact on your audience. Tip number five. Know your call to action. What is the thing that you want your audience to do at the end of this? When they get to the end of your video, do you want them to subscribe? Do you want them to click a link? Do you want them to go down to the description? Do you want them to answer a question in the comments? What is it that you want them to do? Know your call to action. Never end one of your videos without having a next step or a call to action for your audience. 
follow these five tips, get yourself prepared, know where you're going, know the journey that you're gonna take the audience on, know what you want them to remember and what you want them to do, and it's going to drive up. It's gonna up level that confidence that you have in delivering your content in your video or your live stream. Listen, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can know when I release new videos about the techniques and the technologies of storytelling. Listen, I'll see you in the next video. My forehead's too big. Well, that was embarrassing. Yeah.